So we're going to skip. We're going to skip about a thousand years after Vipassana. Vipassana would be 2,500 years ago, essentially. <clears throat> so let's go. Fa let's fast forward about a thousand years. So there's this guy whose name is Bodhidharma, and uh, there's a, very little is known about him. It's a lot of this is myth. Some people, uh, actually, some of his historians or scholars have said that he was actually from from uh, Persia, that he was a Persian. But the, the traditional story is that he's Indian. He's from the South India, and he was uh, from a, uh, I think that maybe a, he was a prince. So no one really knows. Uh, all we know is, is that the legend is someone came from India and or from Persia into China. And <clears throat> around a thousand years after the Buddha's uh, uh, teaching, and um, he, and so this is what I love. Uh, so it's like he didn't teach um, uh, watching your body and watching your feelings and watching your mind so much. He didn't teach um, the traditional, um, uh, the, uh, the old um, teachings. What, what it, it said is, is that he pointed to the mind. That his whole teaching was pointing to the mind. Many of you know that I have a saying, a slogan called, it's your mind stupid, which offends some people. So uh, that's sort of the same thing. That's my modern way of kind of talking about the, the Bodhidharma saying, it's your mind, it's your mind, it's your mind. Um, and I want to talk about that t today. I think that um, it's, it's astonishingly hard to grasp that, to understand it. Um, I, I've talked about it a number of times at, at, uh, at our all-day retreats, but um, as I said, it is, um, what does that mean? What does it mean, it's your mind, or it's your mind stupid? What does that mean? Um, for sure, he is suggesting that we look at, that we stay connected to the reality of the mind, moment to moment to moment. That's, I mean, that's easy to say, but it's not easy to do. Um, so, he, his, his disciple came to him, and the, some people say he had one disciple, he certainly had one main disciple, who became the second patriarch, and Bodhidharma is, was called the first patriarch. His disciple came to him and asked him, he said, help me to quiet my mind, pacify my mind. So all of us could probably relate to that, right? Can't you imagine going to a teacher and saying, could you help me kind of quiet my mind? And so uh, Bodhidharma said, well, okay, bring your mind to me and I'll do that for you, right? All you have to do is just bring, just give me your mind and I'll do that. So I, we don't know whether the guy went off and kind of worked with that for a while or not. Probably he did. He was a very serious student. And, uh, but eventually he came back and he said, well, he said, uh, I, can't find, I can't do that because I can't find it. And then Bodhidharma said, so well, I've quietened your mind for you. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the um, things uh, to uh, take away from that is that when you look for it, you can't find it. What, what is the shape of your mind? Is it shaped like your head? Is it like, is it like circular? Does it have a form? Does it have substance? What is it? What is the mind? The problem with most everyone in this room, including me, is that we have this you know, some people would call it delusion. But we'll just say we just have this kind of uh, romantic idea, okay? That there's me and there's my mind. And they're not the same, right? There's an Anne, and then the mind, there's the thoughts that come through her head, or Peggy or Victor. Uh, so uh, if I am thinking uh, bad thoughts, it is um, 
there's a victor and then there's bad thoughts, right? Or if I'm thinking good thoughts, there's a victor and there are good thoughts. This is really uh, what, what the Chinese people, would, their teachers would say. They would say, that's stupid. <laughs> And you know, really, they actually say, uh, the, the, the Chan teachers, or a lot of them say, greed, hatred, and stupidity. <laughs> you know, we say like delusion. Doesn't delusion sound better than stupidity? I think it does. Oh, you're, you know, you've got a delusion going. But if you just say, well, you're just this kind of stupidity. But uh, the degree to which we um, um, deny the reality that it is the mind that is causing this arm to move right this minute, okay? You look over here in this direction, and so what are you, what are you convinced that that's Victor moving his arm? Is that what it looks like? It is, isn't it? That's Victor moving his arm. And why do you think you think that? Because you think that's Sage watching Victor moving his arm. <laughs> see, it takes two delusions, doesn't it? So you see, in, do you get it? Right, I mean, in other words, uh, I think I said that last Wednesday uh, at our class, uh, we were sitting and, and, and the body was slumped over. And so, uh, in the first sit and so. Who did that? Who just did that? Who did that? Hmm? Victor, is that what you want to believe? Victor did it. See, if you want to, if you want to believe that, then you want to believe that you're Allison. But what about the fact that the truth is, it's a mind that experiences discomfort in the body, right? So that so the mind experiences some sensations, and automatically it moves the body. It's called nama rupa, nama rupa. So, most of us are just insulted to be called a mind, right? So I look at Nancy and I say, that's a mind. I am not a mind, I'm Nancy. Um, this is what Bodhi Dharma is trying to get us to do, is to look at this, this way that we deny the reality of Nama, that we, re we deny it because we so cling to this idea that I am something other than my mind. So, um, the, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's just an enormous problem because if, if we're not careful, we can get into this, this thing of, like in Vipassana, of, uh, I am, I am watching my body sensations. I am watching my feelings. I am watching my mind, right? And there's, there's this separate eye that's having the experience. Right? This, is why, this is why the charm teaching is, is so direct and confronted. It's trying to get us to, to, to let go of that idea that there's this separate eye that's having this experience. And it's trying to get us to recognize that the that what is what is functioning uh, is the mind and the body, the mind and the body, the mind and the body.